Well, explosions have been heard in southern Lebanon as bombardments continue between Israel and Hezbollah. Up to 60,000 people have already been displaced on the Lebanese side since the fighting began, with thousands more evacuated from their homes on the Israeli side too. Let's speak to Ali Hashem. He is in Nakura in southern Lebanon for us. Ali, what have you been hearing there from the border? Well, uh, with the number of um, displaced people increasing, there are, there's possibility that there will be more, especially with the fires on the border between Lebanon and Israel, especially towards the area where we are here in Nakura and also another town uh, to, to the south from here, which is Al Masha'a. Both are on the border, but the other one is after here. Anyway, uh, we've been there, and actually, maybe Raid can show us a bit of the smoke here. Most of the bushes around Nakura and Al Mashab are right now ablaze following Israeli bombing with uh, phosphorus, white phosphorus bombs. Every now and then we can hear uh, explosions coming from these areas. These are cluster bombs. This area has a, um, a, a legacy with cluster bombs uh, from the 2006 uh, war between Hezbollah and Israel. And of course, now. So, uh, the uh, municipality in uh, Nakura is now calling on the United Nations here in Lebanon, and uh, Nakura is the headquarters of the United Nations, to try help in uh, extinguishing the fire. Also, civil defense uh, forces are trying. There are a lot of attempts, but the infrastructure doesn't really exist. There are no helicopters. There are no advanced ways to, um, uh, to try contain the fire. So this is, this is the situation, uh, and there are a, a bit of concerns that these fires, especially that in the town of Al Mashab, uh, the fire came close to residential areas, especially houses on the peripheries. In Nakura, it's still a bit far, but there are a lot of concerns that the fire will, will get into the, the town if, if things aren't done to, to stop it somewhere. I'm sure. Ali Hashem there with the latest for us from Nakura in southern Lebanon near the Israeli border. Thank you, Ali. Well, let's now bring in Tamar Kamut. He's a professor of public policy at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. Tamar, I know we keep talking about the, the fears of a potential escalation, and Hezbollah has been very careful so far, but will they continue with that as the death toll continues to mount in Gaza? Uh, Anastasia, that's a very good and difficult question. My guess that, yes, it will, be, it will continue to be a calculated response. So the more the situation gets uh, serious in the Gaza Strip, uh, it's already very serious, but mm. let's, uh, Hezbollah was very clear about setting a red line, which is a land invasion. <clears throat> so they threatened that if a land invasion uh, starts, that they will be, they might join this, uh, this round of, of war. So uh, let's see, so far what they're doing is they're keeping the Northern Front uh, busy, active. They're engaging with Israel and, uh, and it's more or less a calculated response. So they want more or less to divert the military also attention of Israel and to keep the Northern Front alive, to, uh, to re release some remove some pressure from, from, from Gaza. But it's still very small when it mm. comes to scale, to the scale of the operations and, uh, and, and, and the, the, the disengagement. So it's still small. But given how imminent the Israelis keep saying this ground invasion is, I mean, if that does actually take place, that's essentially mm. calling Hezbollah's bluff. Well, yeah, I mean, so, so, so let's put things into perspective. So Hezbollah is, a, is in a really delicate situation. So it, it's between two pressures. Mm. First, it is, of course, Hezbollah is, is, is part of this uh, resistance uh, axis, Hamas, Hezbollah, and, mm -hmm. and Iran also. But at the same time, Lebanon is in a very dire political and social economic conditions. And so Hezbollah, Hezbollah's military political uh, doctrine has always been that we are there to protect Lebanon to, uh, and, and also to fight Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, now, if it does not, uh, let's say if, if, the, if, if a ground invasion happens in the Gaza Strip and they don't launch a full war on Israel from their side, so its political uh, legitimacy will be eroded inside Lebanon. Sure. But at the same time, a large portion of the Lebanese society also, they don't want war as well because they are already in that situation. So Hezbollah has to delicately balance between these two pressures. And they are not in an easy position by any mean. And also we have to look at the Iranian factor as well. Will Iran 
support uh, Hezbollah if it decides to go into a full war with Israel or not? Because you need also a strategic depth, correct? Like you need, I mean, if a war happens with Hezbollah, then uh, we're talking about military supplies, logistics as well. Mm. So you will expect a role from Iran as well. So all these things are being calculated more or less, sure. but still it's, 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 it's a vague situation. We don't know what's... Uh... Well, we still can't really have this conversation without talking about the United States as well. And, and they've been saying that, well, it's reported that they've been saying they want this ground invasion delayed ostensibly mm. because they also want to get some assets into the region yeah. and safeguard their own troops and, and their own assets there. Is it just that or is the US actually now rethinking its whole approach to this conflict? Another difficult question, but <laughs> let me let me put it this way. So uh, I think the Americans are there to shoulder the Israelis in these difficult times for the Israelis and also to offer military assistance. And, sure. and, and of course, uh, uh, don't forget, I mean, says that the U.S. has vast experience in Afghanistan, uh, you, Iraq, Fallujah, Mosul. So they have been involved or they, they were like, you know, uh, the, the involved in such wars, like, you know, urban wars, like in the Gaza And they have advisors on the ground. Exactly. So, and the Israelis, I'm sure, they need all kind of expertise and assistance on board. Sure. So my guess, uh, and also following the Israeli media and political positions, there has to be a land invasion to satisfy Israel's grievances and also to set a new standard of deterrence, like, mm -hmm. you know, after this mega scale, like, you know, event that happened. So uh, the U.S. is there. I think to shoulder the Israelis, to offer them help and assistance, and also to make sure to control the Israelis that they don't do any impulsive, uh, make, they don't make any impulsive decisions that need, that lead to a further escalation. I mean, Netanyahu is unexpected. His behavior is unexpected. Like, you know, he, I mean, so a, a, a scenario that involves a war with Iran, Netanyahu taking the opportunity now, having all this U.S. support to strike Iran, for example, the nuclear facilities, you never know. So they want to make sure also that they're restraining Israel's response and Israel's, uh, and make sure they don't go in an, any, any impulsive behavior or uncalculated decisions. So I think more or less this is the U.S. rule into the entire uh, game, like, you know. An attempt at containment, it sounds like. More or less, yes. Tamar Kamut um, from the Doha Institute of Graduate Studies, thank you for joining me again here in Doha. My pleasure.